I'm just cutting in here to answer a couple of your questions that you might have. So the first question that you might have is, why is the video so long? The reason is there's a lot of things that you have to do to get set in your world. So yeah, that's that. The second question that you might have is, why is the video so late? So there's a couple of reasons to that. Uh, the first one being that um, this is this was a little bit of a new style of content for me to produce. So as you probably will hear in a little bit, I recorded this as a voiceover. So the vocals weren't the problem. I recorded that in a, just an hour, but um, the problem were the visuals. So I had to synchronize the visuals. So there was a lot of new things to learn and a lot of things to experiment. But at the end, I got there. But with that being said, though, um, I'm not too, too proud of them. So if you think like uh, you're not here for uh, messed up visuals uh, or a little bit out of sync, um, you can just plug in your headphone or turn up your speakers and um, not watch the video. But the tips are good, so you might want to watch them. And the final reason was that I was working on YouTube a little bit too hard. But don't get me wrong, I am absolutely loving YouTube. I have a lot of ideas to come, but uh, just it's good to take a little bit of break now again, right? So I'm back. I'm going to be working on videos hard now. So yeah, that's that. Enjoy the video. I know it's red blocks and welcome back to another video. So, the feeling that you get while starting a new survival world is never different. You get absolutely pumped, creativity flows through your body, but you get a little bit overwhelmed as well because, you see, you might be overwhelmed by the sheer amount of things that you want to do in your world or by the survival aspect because there's a lot of things that you have to do before you get to the point where you can just build as your heart contents and do whatever you want, right? You want to rule over your world. And being kind of a pro player, because I've known the game for quite a bit now, and having played it for a bit, I know basically a lot about survival and how you should get started. So in this video, I'm going to be walking you through how you should start over world, how you get established, and from there, you can do whatever you want. And just a few things before you get into it. This is being recorded as a voiceover, so meaning that something that you might be seeing on screen now might not be completely synchronized, okay? You can probably understand what, probably what's happening, but just keep that in mind, and I might go on for a little bit. Um, <laughs> everything that I'm saying here, most of them can be applied to Java Edition. Uh, I'm probably going to be focusing more on Bedrock Edition, though. I'm going to be mentioning throughout the video that I'm going to give you is even before you have joined your world is that you should name your world before you do that because you see you might get a little bit too pumped and too energetic and you might even not realize that you haven't renamed your world and that will just stay for forever and like let's say after one session you log off and you come back and um, sometimes you may have like hundreds of worlds. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised because most of you are veterans here. And it might be a little bit tedious to look through all of them and to see which one is your survival world. So just a little thing, name your world with a distinct name so that you can remember by sight which is the one. Now, I'm not, not going to lie to you. Even I don't do this. Just remember to name your world, okay? Moving into the actual created your world you have spawned into your world. Now, you see, based upon your luck, you could have two kinds of spawn. One next to nothing, or second, you could be, get a little bit lucky and spawn next to a village. Now, I'm going to be covering both of them in fields where they might be a little bit different, right? Um, but for the most part, it's going to be similar. So let's just di dive into it. So after you created your world, you're gonna spawn in before doing anything because I have noticed that a lot of YouTubers, players, just dilly dallying around till the day is over, they do nothing, and at the end of the day, zombies just spawn at night and kill them over and over again, and by that point, your world is basically just dead. So, the first thing that you should do after spawning into a world, go to a tree, punch it, uh, get a few more because Logs are really, really useful, even early on, later on, so get like 16 logs, which is a stack of planks. After that, make yourself one wooden pickaxe, don't make any wooden tools, 
um, other other than that and get some cobblestone. If you want to be exact, get, grab 19, that's um, enough for all of your tools and a furnace. But you can get, again, a little bit extra, never hurts. So after you've gotten yourself your tools, stone tools that is, and your furnace, now comes a little bit of difference. Because the next thing that you want to focus on is food. Now if you have spawned into a village, you'll know that um, villages spawn with hay bales, and hay bales can be turned into wheat, right? So it's a little bit different, and we're going to be actually starting off with the village spawn. So if you, if you don't spawn in the village, just skip around about a few few times again earlier, but you probably don't want to do that because if you might spawn in a village in your next world, who knows? So, you spawn into a village, you have some hay bales, um, just mine all of them out because there's no need for the villagers to have them. They do not use them at all, just mine everything out. While they're at it, loot the complete village because, I mean, villagers have good, good loot and some good workstation blocks which you're probably going to be needing um, in the beginning. and. Even if your villagers need them, you can just bring them back that. So, loot the village, get all the hables, and one thing before you convert all of your hables into wheat and then bread, don't do that, okay? So, let's say you get yourself 20 hables, right? What I would recommend is you take 5 of that hables, turn that into wheat, and then turn that into bread because... You see, later on, wheat is going to be really essential, and to have that in, like, 15 hay bales, more than enough. <laughs> okay, now, moving back to if you didn't spawn into a village, which probably is most likely, then I, what I would recommend for food for you is that, you see, you want to just run around, get every single animal that you see, because... Believe me, food early on is a real crisis and before you even set up your animal farms, which you're going to get into a little bit, it's going to be absolutely crucial. So kill every single animal, don't think of sparing them, just remove them out of existence. After that, um, you actually want to keep in mind that you want to get yourself a bed. I didn't mention that in the village one because you see... I mean, villages bed spawn in absolutely abundance, so yeah, if you, if you didn't spawn in a village, and you're killing all the animals, keep in mind you have to kill at least three sheep. Because if you don't, you're, you're gonna have to survive through the night and good luck with that, that's literally impossible on the first night. So let's say that you have got yourself a bed, you got yourself a few food, um, be that raw or cooked, it's your choice. I mean, if you got any abundance, it shouldn't really matter. After that, what, you sh what should you do? Because some people, right, try to build a dirt shack, a wooden box, or even a fancy house. Do not do that because, believe me, that is one of the lamest things that you can do because you can probably build a good house in one day and you don't need it because Minecraft has this amazing rule that you can sleep without having to cover yourself. You can sleep in the field. So when it come, comes around to night 10, just put your bed down and keep spamming it. Because the second you get to sleep, no mobs are able to spawn within that time. So yeah, don't try to build the house, just go to sleep. I'm. This is probably a little bit long-winded because I actually had to because the first day is a little bit confusing for other people. Okay, a little bit long-winded, but again, it was needed because some people really get confused. Okay, so you have yourself your starter tools, your some you have some food, you have raided a village if you got one. Now on day two, you see on day two, um, a lot of people just go exploring, get some food. But honestly, you see, you can't actually upgrade to iron really fast. And some people actually like to wait around. I see there's absolutely no point in doing that. So on day two, your complete goal should be just to get iron. Now, you see, why should you waste a complete day while getting iron? Because you want to get full, fully set it, okay? A full set of iron, like some people believe, is 9 iron ingots because that's enough to get yourself full tools. Some believe it's 24 because that's enough for all of your armor. But personally, if you want to have full iron and you want to say that, you should at least have 37 iron ingots. That's because you need 9 for all of the tools, excluding the hoe, and 24 for all of your armors, 
one for your shield which is absolutely vital in the early days even in the later days and three for a water bucket because i actually can't imagine minecraft survival without a water bucket right so to get all of that iron is going to be really hard so what do i recommend you see minecraft has like pretty much similar generation throughout all of the worlds and if you spawn in a plains other biomes do work but that's the best example you will see that there's a little bit of a little bit of a i guess cave entrance poking out through the ground and they leave two basically dead ends at the end <laughs> and they have iron ore in between them so what i would recommend is get the extra wood that you got on day one make that into sticks and when you get into the cave mine every single coal ore out and believe me you will absolutely appreciate this right because coal in the later days is just tedious to get okay so grab your sticks torches make some sorry grab your sticks grab some coal make some torches get all the iron that you need uh, i do recommend don't spend too much time in one cave because mobs then would probably start to spawn and just poke in and out sometimes and get all the iron that you need and let's say at, at almost the end of the day you get all of your iron go back home you probably get a little bit of coal too make some furnaces if you spawn in a village you probably have a blast furnace to work with and uh, put your iron in there your coal in there and after it gets melted you're kidding you're kitted out with full iron and believe me this is going to help you through a lot of the time because we are not going to be upgrading a little bit into the future, right? So, moving into the later days. Start with all of your iron armor, your tools, and all of that. You probably actually noticed this as you were doing it, but you're probably running a little bit short of food. Now, how do we fix that? Because food is, again, really crucial, as I mentioned in the first you see, the best food in Minecraft, and I could probably even make a complete video about this, um, is cooked beef. If you watch any YouTubers doing their late game survival world things, you probably notice that a lot of them choose golden carrots over steak, uh, or cooked beef, I guess. Um, and that's absolutely mad, I mean, not that much, because, but... Believe me, cooked beef is the best food and it's probably the most easiest one to set up early game, right? And um, to set up, you just need two things. You first of all need a wheat farm and the second of all, you need a cow pen. Now, the difference between Java and Bedrock comes in because if you're on Java, you have a little bit of privilege, I guess, because there's a mechanic on Java is called entity cramming. If you have too many entities in one place, they start to cramp and they just die. And you can make a cow crusher. I mean, I don't have any links to any videos because I don't play on Java, but you can look them up, build them, and you will have it there. But if you're on Bedrock, a normal just to cow pen works. And yeah, you just set up a wheat farm. Now, there's a few tips about both of them. I'm going to mention them because this is a tip video anyways. So while you're setting up a wheat farm, the... First thing that might come to mind is we, a, we, a row of wheat, water stream, a row of wheat, water stream. Now, to be completely honest with you, that is indeed efficient because if you do it that way, your crops do gain a little bit of boost while growing up. But you see, here's my theory when it comes in. A single water source can hydrate four blocks in every single side and um, hopefully that is playing on screen now and it can cover 80 blocks with one water source that's just efficient right but as I already said the if you do it the previous method your crops do grow a little bit faster but you're probably not gonna be sitting around just looking at your crops while they grow right you're probably gonna be doing some other things that I'm gonna mention so believe me, you want to do it my way, <laughs> which lets you harvest them faster, right? And as of the cow pen, I really, there isn't too much to it. Just build a 9x9, nine nine, or I guess 11x11 11 11 if you count the corners of fences. That's going to require a little bit more wood, chop them out, and you should have enough wood to build a 9x9 nine 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 pen. Get two cows in it and start breathing them up. But don't use the steak yet, because if you have... A little bit along with it by now but 
I'm I'm here to give you tips, right? So just bear with me. So now you have yourself food situation covered and you have full iron. Now what to do? Okay, okay, I, I forgot myself. Anyways, so now what you want to do is do a little bit of exploration. Look around yourself. Um, you're trying to find a village. Now, village spawners who spawn next to a village can actually skip this part. <laughs> but most likely than not, you're probably not going to spawn into a village. Um, so what should you do? So what I recommend is... If you spawn in a plains biome and you're surrounded by, let's say, forest, but one way is clear, go into the clear way because most likely than not, again, you're probably not going to have a village sitting in a forest, right? So you want to find a clear opening, go that way, take your coordinates and take a screenshot and just go explore, right? You want to find a village and yeah, on your way though, grab your sugar cane, village washers, grab sugarcane around you, okay? Just don't think that since that you already have a village, you have everything. Now, some people might have spawned into an abandoned village, which is actually the most useful a little bit later on. So if you ha happen to spawn into an abandoned village, just go out and search for another one, okay? <laughs> it shouldn't be that hard, okay? So after you've done your exploration, just if you find a village, write the coordinates down, come back home, if you found any sugarcane, you're not going to be making a sugarcane farm yet, like farm it as an automation. Just put them down against a river or a pond or a r anything that has water next to it, basically, and they will sh start to grow. Oh, one more thing I forgot to mention. If you are, like, you want to make a map room, which is really, really a cool idea, you could grab yourself some maps. That means you have to grab a little bit of sugarcane from your local area. Make a map and you can explore and the map will fill up if you want to do that. You see, nowadays, netherite may be the top top of the list, but you need diamonds to get to netherite. And you probably will find out in a little bit that the village that you hopefully found by now is going to be super essential for getting you to that diamond trade. But I'm going to get that back to that in a little bit. But you see... Even if you want to get full diamond and you want to get enchanted, you're going to need to find five diamonds while mining. I know this is actually a little bit frustrating. I'm really frustrated that uh, you can't just go find an enchantment table and a diamond pickaxe because those are the two, two things that you're going to be needing if you want to enchant and get, get to that diamond trade, right? So, um, but, but there's some good news i guess if you even want to skip these five diamonds you can go out for a treasure hunt session where you go to various structures hope to find diamonds but honestly five diamonds isn't that bad so uh, my tip for getting diamonds in a good way is to one if you want to do this the actual good way then get grab your tools um torches food all that stuff and go down to the caves that I told you to not to explore on the first days and go down them, go down to a low level and who knows, you might find diamonds. But if you want to do it, um, this in the non-scary but kind of reliable, not that much way, you could go down and do some branch mining. So what is branch mining? It's basically just going down and mining in a straight line and sometimes poking some holes. So, dig down a staircase down to Y level 11. If anyone t tells you to go down to 10 or 12, ignore them to heck. Okay? 11 is the best. You clear? Okay. After you've done that, um, just go in a straight line. Sometimes poke some holes on the left, the right, and hopefully you'll find yourself some diamonds. That's basically it. After you've gone find diamonds, you want to come up to the surface, get some wood, and craft the, the most important thing in your world the most iconic tool in minecraft the diamond pickaxe this is an honorable moment in your minecraft world cherish it to heck okay um after that you probably should have to get a little bit more resources but with the remaining two diamonds uh, you also have to combine that with obsidian to do that grab your diamond pickaxe go down to the mines before you mine the obsidians though i have a tip again so, you see, you probably have poured water on top of a lava lake underground and they, that turned into an obsidian lake. 
So if while before mining that, place a block of water in front of that obsidian, which is most likely stone. And that's because you see, um, you can probably fall into obsidian while mining that obsidian because there might be lava below that. And if you put water uh, next to it, the chances are that the water will stop the obsidian. It will turn into a more obsidian and it will stop the obsidian from going into the lava and it will stop you from going to the lava. So keep that in mind. But after you get four obsidian, um, actually I recommend getting uh, 14 because four for your enchantment table and 10 for later on in your nether portal. But you're gonna get that into a little bit. After that, come up to the surface and make an enchantment table. Now, if you have been taking care of your um, what do you call it? The cow pen. You should have, um, hopefully, I guess, more than you need 46 leather to make this farm. So, hopefully, you have 46 leather. And uh, if your sugar cane farm has been running for a little bit of a while, you should have, uh, oh god, no. <laughs> you probably need a little bit more than that, but you can probably uh, wait around for a little bit, or you can get some sh uh, skeletons, bone mill the sugar cane farm. But after you've done all of that, to make an enchantment table, which is really, really big because you want to make your tools and armor really, really strong. Don't you? Yeah, you probably do. <laughs> so how do you make yourself an enchantment setup, which you can probably see on screen now, but I'm still going to say it because why not? So you want to place down your enchantment table and then leaving a block of airspace all around it. You want to place down 15 bookshelves, which is quite the expensive list. So hopefully you've granted enough. Anyways, after you've done that, you can probably see the enchantment table is saying to you that you need two things. One of them being lapis and the other thing being XP. Now, lapis is probably a little bit easier to get while you're mining or caving. So hopefully you did that. And after that, the more, I guess, important or harder thing to get is experience or XP, better known. How do you do or get XP in large quantities? Because to enchant with level 30, you first of all need level 30, right? So to get XP, you can do two things. So first of all, hopefully while you were mining or caving, you found yourself a dungeon or better known as a spawner, which spawns mobs. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Um, <laughs> so, that, so there's a block in the middle of this dungeon and that spawns mobs if there's no dark, if there's darkness around it and that is really really useful so you see you have to pay a little bit of attention to see which kind of mob that spawns and then after that you have to clear a little bit of space which i'm not going to get into you can probably look up the spawner on youtube again you're on youtube you can probably just search up other things and then follow that tutorial block by block and you have yourselves a specific type of mob spawner which gives you different type of mobs drops that makes sense and most importantly experience that will help you to enchant things but now let's say you actually didn't get a dungeon or a mob spawner right because that might happen you might not always get lucky so then what you should do you see then you should make yourself an all i guess <laughs> and common mob spawner which uh, is going to take a lot of time to build on camera so Here's, a, here's one on screen now. Um, this provides all kinds of mobs to spawn in there, fall down, and you can just one-shot them. That will give you experience alongside a lot of mob drops. Now, you see, you want to actually build this a little bit far from your base because there's another kind of farm that you will want to build around your base. Here, diamond armor, diamond tools, your mind instantly might go to, oh my god, I'm going to need this many diamonds. Oh. God, I'm ready. But you see, that's actually not the reality. After Java update 1.14, the villagers were revamped completely, and most specifically, three kinds of villagers were added: the armor, the weaponsmith, and the toolsmith. These three villagers or villager professions give you all of the diamond equipment that you need. Yes, that's correct. You heard me from here. You do not need to grind for diamonds anymore. Well, I mean, you need to grind for diamond equipment, but you don't have to mine, which is really, really tedious. So, you remember the village you found earlier on? Yeah, so go back to that village. Now, you see 
to get them uh, to get these three villagers to give you diamond armor because and other things you actually need to level up because you see if they're not leveled up i mean they don't know about diamond things so how, how would they know and if they get more experienced meaning that you have to trade with them they'll know more about diamond things and then they can trade you diamond things so to level up villagers, the easiest way to do that is to buy things from them and to get the emeralds in the most vast quantity is from getting them from fleshers. You see, fleshers are really, really helpful for getting emeralds because they accept sticks for emeralds. Literally, the first resource they get wood is emeralds and that means diamonds. So you can get wood for diamond. Which, um, I mean, what else can I say? I mean, you're gonna need to mind a lot of trees, but yeah, you, you can get them real easily. So what should you do? You should, first of all, get yourselves at least, I would say, four, four fletching tables. Put, put them all down in the village uh, in a row, because if you don't do that, you're probably gonna have to be searching through all of the villagers individually, and that might get a little bit tedious. So put down four fletching tables, four unemployed villagers that come there, they're gonna work and then you have to grind through wood because you're gonna have to sell them sticks for them to give you emeralds so just go on a little bit of a mining session and sell them all of the emeralds after that get yourself the three um i was about to say playstation <laughs> don't get your know, three playstations playstations because i don't even know how they work you want to get yourself three workstations one of them, the blast furnace, hopefully you got that when you were in the village. The other one is going to be the grindstone. And the final one being the smithing table, which you're actually going to be using a little bit later on so that it's not a complete waste. After that, yeah, after you get a few emeralds from your uh, Fletcher villagers, come to these guys and buy stuff <laughs> until they go to absolute expert level and then they'll trade you diamond equipment now you see um on java there's a hundred percent i mean i guess i can never find words when i need them there's a hundred percent chance that a weaponsmith will give you um all the four armor pieces but i believe i'm not sure this on that um a weaponsmith will trade you 100 percent of the diamond equipment so you might need to do um a little bit of re research for that but uh, that shouldn't be that hard. You probably are playing with me. <laughs> so just going onto the wiki will help you. But you see, after that, if you have grind enough, you should have yourself full diamond equipment just using filters and a lot of trees. Yes, I know, a lot of trees. But you have yourself full diamond. Now, moving on to the next part. Now, oh, you see, you have to ask yourself the most important question that you probably will in your complete playthrough. Is this gonna be your long time survival world? You see, if the answer is yes, you're probably gonna fight the dragon, get an elytra and do other things then. If not, you're probably gonna do one challenge and that's gonna be it. So make sure what you're doing and after that, let's move on with this stage. So, you see, why did I ask that? Is because you need explosives to get nether ID. You see, you not strictly need to, but it is the most efficient way and honestly it's really easy to do so if this is going to be a long time survival world you want to set up a creeper um and farm sorry i had to do that <laughs> because um a long time survival world needs an elytra and to fly with an elytra you need to get fire rockets which require gunpowder you see all of that is tying back together so i'm not going to show you again a creeper farm build but I am going to be showing you a creeper farm that I built in my survival world and actually follow the tutorial so the link of that will be in the description it's by JC Plays, amazing youtuber on the Minecraft Bedrock Edition and you should actually check, them out, check him out because he built some absolutely great redstone builds and farms but this is a tedious build I'm not gonna lie to you this took me 11 hours um in game time with an iron x because i didn't upgrade to diamond for some weird reason and yeah it took me 11 hours to gather the resources and then build it so good luck because you probably have diamond equipment if you have been following me through and um, but it's still gonna be tedious 
again moving into the next part of this actually if you think that this is going to be a short time world and you actually just want to get to netherite you should actually ditch that idea because that idea i mean i guess that farm is really tedious to build okay i'm not gonna lie to you and if you just want to get another right, build a sheep farm. Yes, it's as, as easy as that. Because sheep provide wool, and wool provides beds, and beds provide boom boom in the nether. And boom booms provide ancient debris if you can find them. So, if, you, if this is a short time world, build, build a sheep farm. You can automate it a little bit later because um, to automate it, you need to go to the nether. If you have done that already, I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. But... It, a um, not autom automated manual sheep farm would also work. So, ask yourself that question. If you want to build a creeper farm, link in the description. And if you want to build a sheep farm, I mean, you, you probably can already imagine uh, how is it time in the survival world that I will actually um, recommend you go back, take a step back, and re relax and actually enjoy your survival world because as of now, I've been recommending you speedrun the dragon, which. <laughs> Since this is probably going to be your, your long time survival world, you probably don't want to do that. You're going to take your time. Uh, don't take too much of your time because that might not be good. But take a step back, relax, um, build a house or two, build some buildings. If you actually want to go to, into the nether while doing the TNT method, because if you didn't understand why you made that creeper farm, it's so that you can take TNT to the nether. But if you're doing the bed method, get some wood. Basically, just take a step back, relax. But after you're done relaxing, we are not done. Let's get back to some hardcore stuff, shall we? <laughs> so now, uh, you want to take your t um, 10 obsidian, make a flint and steel, which you probably should have enough flint because you made a lot of fleshing tables which require flint, right? So grab your flint and steel and the nether portal, not the nether portal, obsidian, and make the nether portal and then jump in. Before you do that though, um, grab a few things because the nether is really scary nowadays. So I, I would recommend getting at least two stacks of blocks, which shouldn't be that big of a deal because if you did man mining, you should have a lot of cobblestone. Um, and grab some torches if you want. That's not really needed. Grab a little bit of food. Don't go too overhand because if you do, you lose them. It's not going to be good, right? So grab a little bit of food, not too much. Then jump into the nether. Now, um, okay, I am really forgetting things. <laughs> While you were m probably mining in the overworld, you probably found a little bit of gold, right? So smoke that up, get four smelted, uh, make some iron, the gold boots, wear them, and then come to the nether. Because Palins don't like you if you don't wear gold for some reason. Okay, after that, now you're in the nether. I would say just come in, um, check what's around you, um, um, the main goal you, for you should be to explore and if you're lucky you can probably find a bastion but if you get absolutely like I don't know nine sevens in a row luck uh, you can probably find yourself a nether fortress which are really uncommon now after the nether update so yeah <laughs> keep an eye out for nether fortresses because they're gonna be absolutely crucial okay after that I've been stretching this section out way too much, but you're probably here because of the th uh, thumbnail which has me wearing netherite armor. So now in this stage, you want to go and get netherite. So um, go back out, get into the overworld, uh, set your spawn, get, um, put some things away, grab your uh, diamond pickaxe, which you probably should have still. Um, actually, no, 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 don't grab your diamond pickaxe. Um, just take your iron stuff and grab your TNT, go back into the nether, and uh, now you have to mine down, which is a really scary experience. So, what, how should you go down? Now, you see, there are lava lakes in the nether, and you should actually avoid them, because, fun fact, nether and the lava, yeah, they're, they're not good. So, go opposite of a lava lake, and then dig down to Y12. You want to have your uh, foot at Y12 because you see, nether, I'm not going to go into two details, but ancient debris spawns between Y17 and Y8. And if you do an explosion at Y12, uh, you can get the best out of both of them. So, yeah, just put your 
feet, feet at Y12 and then dig out a, a little bit of a section in the front and then dig out three blocks in a horizontal place two TNT on two sides place a lever or if you want you can light them with a flint and steel on both sides and then run back and after the explosion happens the, you have a chance to find ancient debris which I'm not gonna lie in my first when I did this method it went really expensive oh my god what is the word it, it, it's pently word okay I don't even know if that's the word but we're gonna roll with it okay so it went really well uh, hopefully it goes the same for you I mean it might not but just know ancient debris is really rare and you have a higher chance while you do this um, another thing just one more thing to note because um, the, you're probably not going, going to be under a lava lake even if you don't start at it so if, if that happens just turn since you have netherite, you're absolutely an inch away from um, completing the establishment state of your world. I didn't mention in this the previous clip, um, but you have to remember that you have to get 36 ancient debris. So that's including the hole. If you don't want the hole, uh, you need 32 ancient debris, which might require a little bit of little bit more of uh, resource gathering, but it shouldn't be that bad, bad and honestly I absolutely enjoy mining for ancient debris I might be a weirdo but that's what I enjoy right it shouldn't be that bad so after you gather all of your ancient debris smell that up combine that with the gold I know gold is well used to be garbage but now it's kind of useful and you have yourselves the ancient debris uh, turned into netherite ingots now go to your smithing table that you set up for your villagers combine that in your uh, I guess smithing table and now you have yourself netherite armor and netherite tools a really really big part of your survival world done after that um, come back to your home after coming out of the nether go to your enchantment table because now you want to enchant so if you don't have 30 levels or more I recommend going back to your farm where you got XP and then just grind out, um, I, get, I would recommend 50 levels, just grind out that, and come back to your enchantment table, and now, you have to start enchanting. Now, to enchanting, I have a few tips and tricks that I actually want to give to you. So, keep an eye out for good enchants. So, good enchantments, I'm going to just lay, name a few, I'm not going to over, go over all of them. Sharpness, unbreaking, efficiency, and... Yeah, that's basically all the three that I'm probably gonna you're gonna look for. And for armor, it's protection for for all of all four of them, right? So what I would recommend for you is after getting level thirty, put every single item into the enchantment table, and you see if you have any of these enchantments, just go with it. If it's not good, you can actually disenchant it in the grindstone. But unless you have all four. of I mean, any any of those enchantments on your enchanting list, I honestly wouldn't go for it because, you see, you have a chance to get something else if you, I guess, go for any of the others, but honestly, I don't, I really don't prefer the risk. And let's just face it, protection 4 is really, really better than thorns, right, on your armor. So, what I would recommend, if you don't have um, the enchantments that I blamed, just go with a dud enchantment on a wooden shovel. Yes, the wooden shovel really doesn't matter, but I like a wooden shovel to get enchanted, so just deal with it. And after you dud enchanted that, you, the enchantment should roll, roll over. Disenchant that wooden shovel because it doesn't, that doesn't really need it. And after that, if you have enchanted for long enough, you should have yourself full netherite armor. That being said, you're pretty much set up with your survival world because you have full netherite armor and netherite tools I mean it can't get too worse for you now can it but there's a few more things that you should do before you actually say that I'm gonna go build everything in the world uh, a few things to note is that you should actually go back to your villagers and I actually forgot to mention this but any of you who found an abandoned village go to back to your nether fortress get some nether ward come back and then oh sorry actually actually yes Yes, grab your another word, come back, and then brew up some portions of weaknesses, splash them to your villagers, and then give them a golden apple. They should be cured, and 
for your hearing them they would absolutely love you and give you discounted trades and if any of you who didn't find a abandoned village want to do this um you can actually um make your villagers a zombie and then cure them i'm not gonna show that in the video because that would be a little bit long-winded and if you guys want to i could do that on another tutorial video but i mean yeah you can probably imagine how you would do it and yeah after that you should put a lector next to your villagers which will give them the librarian trade and you see there's a trade called mending which is um hands down the most important trade in all of minecraft and if you don't have it you're a loser sorry no no that's not the case you're not set that's what i wanted to say so um do all that place the elector next to your villager and you see they have a chance to get the mending enchantment if not you have to break it replace it now this may get a little bit tedious after doing it for a few minutes but believe me if you have mending on your armor you are set i mean set because mending is um i guess it repairs your armor and tools if you get any experience so let's say it's down by one durability and if you get one xp orb it will fix itself which is really great so just get mending and yeah that's basically it um if you actually want to automate all, any of these um like there aren't too many ways you can do it the only the one that you can do is the sheep farm which is really really easy hopefully i will pull that on screen now but with that being said you are set my friend you are set and you can do anything that you want if you want to build a lot of rest and contraptions go ahead if you want to do building go ahead everything is uh, in your hands but with that being said that's all of my job done because now you are setting your world so with that being said guys hopefully you are setting your world and hopefully you enjoyed this video on me teaching you how to get set in your world if you did enjoy it make sure you hit the like button and if you want to see a part two to this because 